You already know what it is. It's your boy Lay back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Jordan Peterson, you up to bat? Bah. Tell me I hate the fucking go. Tell me I hate the It's your boy Lay back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Focus on you in 2022. Focus on you in 2022, man. We back with another Jordan Peterson reaction, man. This is most savage comebacks. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to expect, but we here. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for your boy, man. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's poppin'? Let's get it. How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly guys at the alt-right who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work and say, no, I'm, not one of, I'm not one of you guys, I'm not with you guys. They haven't enjoyed my work. I've definitely read bits on the internet. Read more. Do you think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. Now, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, in your you know, mind. it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. I'm interested in people being able to have different choices and um, and having equality of outcome. Aha, well, so the overwhelming proportion of people who are in prisons are male. Now, do you want to equalize that, just out of curiosity? I, what about bricklayers? They're 99% male. And the, and we've got about three quarters of, of the population now in universities, mm -hmm. in the humanities and social sciences are female. Yeah. Are we going to equalize that? And men, men work more longer hours. They work more dangerous jobs. They're more likely to move. They're more likely to work outside. They're more likely to participate in jobs in the STEM fields that are scalable. They make more money for those reasons. And that's all hidden under the idea that the reason that men and women make different amounts of money is because of their gender. It's a very simplistic analysis. Mm. Why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le legislation to determine what words are that myself and other people are required to utter. Mm. But would you use alternate pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, they're artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues oh. whose viewpoint I do not share. Until women got full legal rights, they could own property for themselves, they could work. Essentially, they were owned. They were You're first attributing their owned lowers, by their fathers and then their by their husbands. Status to the domination by men. Yeah. You already said that you thought that what emancipated women primarily in the 20th century was technological revolution. No, not okay, primarily, so but that's one of two. I think that's it's two not things. not primarily, eh? No, you I don't think the pill was a primary force in the emancipation of women. I think or the was... invention of, or, of tampons, let's say, or the, or the provision of proper sanitary uh, facilities, uh, toilets and that sort of thing. You're, you're, you're thinking instead it was the action of courageous feminists in the 1920s that produced a social revolution that overthrew the patriarchy. That's your theory. Yeah, I That's think... That's a foolish theory. Freedom is smash. Freedom is smash bigotry. That's pure narcissism at work, by the way. What are they spraying? You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. <laughs> my idea of the patriarchy is a, a system of male dominance of society. Yeah, but that's not my sense of the patriarchy. So because, what's yours? Well, in what sense is our society male dominated? 
Uh, the fact that the vast majority of wealth is owned by men, the vast majority of capital and is owned by men. Women do more unpaid it's a labor. Very, very tiny proportion of men and a huge proportion of people who are seriously disaffected are men. Most people in prison are men. Most people who are uh, on the street are men. Most victims of violent crime are men. Mm. Most people who commit suicide are men. Uh, most men, most people who die in wars are men. People who do worse in school are men. Mm. It's like, where's the dominance here precisely? What you're doing. Bro, what do y'all think about this, bro? When they talk about, you know, patriarchy and all that type of stuff, and then he break it down and be like, well, men, most men are locked up or most men do this and most men do that. What do y'all think? I want to hear what y'all think in the comments, though. Like, tell me what y'all think when y'all hear this. From either side, it don't matter. I just want to see what y'all think about this. A tiny substrata of hyper successful men and using that to represent the entire structure of, the, of Western society. There's nothing about that that's vaguely appropriate. But I could say equally well that most rape victims are women. You know, terrible things happen to people of both sexes. And you could say that with, with, with perfect utility, but that doesn't provide any evidence for the existence of a male-dominated patriarchy. I would say that anybody mm. with more than a cursory knowledge of 20th century history who dares to claim simultaneously that they have compassion for the downtrodden and that they're Marxists are revealing either their an ignorance of history that's so astounding that it's actually a form of miracle or a kind of or a kind of malevolence that's so reprehensible that it's almost unspeakable because we already ran the equity experiment over the course of the 20th century and we already know what the the marxist doctrines have done for oppressed people all around the world and the answer to that mostly was imprison them enslave them work them to death or execute them and as far as i can tell that's not precisely commensurate with any message of compassion mm. sorry tried that didn't work we got a hundred million corpses to prove it and that's plenty for me and if it's not enough for you well then you should do some serious thinking either about your historical knowledge or about your moral character whoa uh, question uh, for professor peterson whoa. Um, why do you feel that someone's personal gender identity and pronouns infringes your free speech? Can one not also argue based on your interpretation that professors can use racial slurs in their classroom um, and the, that the inability to do so would violate their freedom of speech? There's a difference between saying that there's something you can't say and saying that there are things that you have to say. And I regard these made up pronouns, all of them, as the neologisms of radical PC authoritarians. Do you understand that? And I don't, I'm not a fan of that sort of person. And the reason I'm not a fan of that sort of person is because I've done my homework. I've read everything I can get my hands on in the development of authoritarian political systems, and I know the literature inside out and backwards. And I am not going to be a mouthpiece for language that I detest. Mm. And that's that. He mad as fuck. I, this whole patriarchy thing, I think you have no idea how pernicious and dangerous it is. Well, no, you I know, don't. I really don't. Men throughout history have fundamentally cooperated to push back against the absolute catastrophe of existence. A terrible death rate, the, the probability of chronic starvation, early death, disease, the difficulty of raising children, mm. with all the death that was associated with that, and to look backwards in time and say, well, basically what happened was men took the upper hand and persecuted women in this tyrannical patriarchy. It's absolutely dreadful misreading of history. It's a terrible thing to teach young women, and it's a horrible thing to inflict upon men. When the Marxists say, well, that wasn't real Marxism, what it really means, and I've thought about this for a long time, it's the most arrogant possible statement anyone could ever make. It means if I would have been in Stalin's position, I would have ushered in the damn utopia instead, that, instead of the genocidal massacres because I understand the doctrine of Marxism and everything about me is good. Mm. It's like, well, think again, sunshine. You don't understand <laughs> it. You don't understand it. And you're not that good. And if the power was in your hands, assuming you had the competence, which you don't, <laughs> You wouldn't have done any better, and even if you had, there would have been someone else waiting right behind you to shoot you the first time you actually tried to do anything wow. good. And that's what happened to all the old guard who ran the damn revolution. Stalin rounded them all up and shot them, along with their families and millions of other Jeez. people. So even if you do happen to be that avatar of moral purity that you claim implicitly, the probability that you'd get to act out your goodness 
in relationship to those possessed by your ideology is zero. Wow. He's being sensitive to offence such a problem, though. Like, we would have previously called that manners. It's a terrible problem. So imagine, you know, imagine you... Okay, so the rule is you can't offend anyone, all right? Let's say you're speaking to one person. I can't offend you. All right, fair enough. What if I'm speaking to ten people? Do I get to offend one in ten? Mm. How about one in a hundred? How about one in a thousand? You're going to come out on stage and you're going to say something important about something vital and you're not going to offend one person in a thousand? Mm. Well, you can't say anything about anything important ever without offending probably the person you're talking to. Im wow. Important speech about important issues, especially contentious issues, is instantly offensive. All right, that was Jordan Peterson, most savage comebacks. Bro, what? This dude is different, bro. I don't, I don't, whatever you believe in, you know, whatever you think about this guy, he stands on what he believes in. And that's something that could be applauded. Now, whether you agree on how he stands or what his stance is, the fact that he's able to voice his truth is something that I support in regards to people being able to speak how they feel about what they feel about. You know what I'm saying? Now, whether, how you go about it and all that type of stuff, that can be, you know, we can talk about that. But the fact that he's speaking his truth is something that I like. And that's something that I promote on my channel. Whatever your truth is, speak it. Don't be hindered by what you think somebody else gonna say, even when you live in your own life. Live the life that you wanna live. As long as you ain't hurting nobody, you ain't bringing no harm to nobody, live your life and live it to the fullest. So, like I said, let me know what y'all think about some of these topics that he was talking about. Some of these comebacks that he was having was very emotional. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that he put a lot of time and studying into the things that he think about too. So y'all let me know, man. That was Jordan Peterson, but you already know. Drop your comment in the comment section, man. I'm gonna be going through reading some of them. Also, self-love and positivity at the end of the day. You know what I stand for over here, self-love and positivity. Till next time, Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Hey!